Uh, and I no longer think about it. I no longer think of the communication um, that, that happens. Now, I, I know that then the book is published and people read it and there is this sort of magical communication that happens between the book and the reader. But because I cut my tie with the book, I no longer feel like I'm a part of that particular conversation. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's impossible for me to have a, any kind, any particular kind of reader in mind, uh, given what we've been talking about up here, given that I myself don't know what side of the wall I'm ever on in any given moment. So, um, you know, uh, it's very interesting. I mean, in, in America, um, I do events like this, you know, and, and sometimes there, there's no one of Indian origin in the audience. Nobody. And I think, well, this is America. This is a beautiful representation of what America is. Um, America has lots of faults, like any country, but it also has some, an, a remarkable quality. Um, and um, I wonder, I wonder if my parents hadn't raised me in America, uh, if I would have become a writer, and if I would have been um, received as warmly as I, I have been there, because um, I think the beauty of America um, compared to older countries like India, like Italy, for example, um, is that it's a country still in progress and a country in which it's possible to, to become American uh, in a way that it's not really possible to become Italian or to become Indian in the same way. Um, and that sense of un an unfolding identity of a country uh, contributes to um, a sort of openness um, but it's fascinating because America is, of course, composed of so many, many, many layers of migrants, right? So they can read my work, and even if they have never set foot in India and never will, it doesn't matter. And again, it goes back to what I was saying about the power of literature. Um, how can I connect to Hardy? How can uh, a reader in Nebraska connect to my work. Um, it's the power of the story and um, the human the, the human element which um, is not limited by uh, what kind of passport we hold. Yeah, there's a question there. Uh, yeah, the lady standing up, yes. Hi, um, I was just wondering, um, I was just wondering which one of your works or which one of your novels or short stories um, is your favorite and why? I couldn't say. It would be like picking my favorite child. I mean, I think each book, when I'm working on it, is everything to me. And as I said, I cut the I cut the cord emotionally and in every other way from, from the books once I'm done with them so that I can give everything I have to the new book. Um, so when, I work, when I'm working on one book, that seems to be the only book that matters, and it is. And then they just go on a shelf when they're done and I move on. Um, so, uh, and they all, they all have a certain, they're all part of my development and all I'm interested in is moving forward and going forward as a writer. And, and in order to go forward, you have to write books and you have to move through them and you have to get to the next book and the next book. So in that sense, I value each of my books as an experience, as a, as a, as a part of that journey. Um, but I, I wouldn't say I favor one over the other. It's it's just it's more what they represent in, over the long haul. I'll just take one more question. The gentleman here. The gentleman here. Yes. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I'm Anirban Bhattacharya. I'm doing a PhD on you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question. 
have a couple of things to ask you. Not that, couple, just one. So they are linked to one another. The one will answer the other, sir. Uh, the thing is that, sir, nowadays, uh, today or tomorrow, yes, uh, your works are included in the syllabi of several institutions these days. So why do you want to tag them under post-colonial literature on, or in the mainstream American studies? And secondly, Chumpalairi today is more in tune with Oshima of namesake or Bela of the lowlands. Thank you. The, the idea of a tag or a label is of absolutely no interest to me. Um, I've been tagged and labeled all my life, mistagged, mislabeled, double labeled, unlabeled as a person. And then it was very ironic because then I became a writer and I noticed my work was tagged and double tagged and mistagged. And I mean, I know it's useful in, a, in terms of criticism. Criticism is, is interested in, in classifying in a sense, you know, what books are doing and why and that sort of thing. But I'm not coming from that place. Um, my books are what they are and uh, I'm happy for anyone who's interested in reading them to read them and that's, that's it. And I, I can't think of any other way to explain what they are. Um, so that's the answer to the first question. Um, Oshima and Bela. Uh, the question is, who am I close to? Yeah, that's right. Who are you close to? Um, neither. I, I'm not either of them. They're who they are. Um, I mean, Bella, I suppose, biographically shares a little bit more of my my life in that she's born uh, outside of India and, uh, you know, is born to Bengali parents who, who live in America. Um, that's about it. She's a very different person from, from me. Um, Ashima is someone much more, you know, modeled after um, the women I of my mother's, you know, uh, my mother and versions of my mother. I mean, she's not my mother, but she's, her, the inspiration for, for Oshima's character came from um, my, all of my, um, I hate to use the word substitute, but my other aunts in, in America, because I, you know, I grew up without any real extended family with no extended family in America. Uh, my extended family was all here, but my parents created an alternative extended family uh, for themselves and therefore for me um, in America. And so I have my mashis there. And so her character was taken from being raised um, by those women, not only my mother, but by that whole, you know, um, sort of collection of, of women who uh, were a part of my life. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know how to thank you, but uh, please continue to enrich the Republic of Writers and through that continue to enrich our lives. Thank and you. come back soon. Thank Shumpa. you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming, and thank you to the to the literary meet, to Malapika. I'm so thrilled to be here tonight in this beautiful setting. Thank you all for coming. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was indeed a very engrossing session, uh, giving us some insights into the pleasures and travails of uh, story writing, novel writing, about homecoming, about belonging, and also information about a PhD on Jumpa uh, uh, That was, the, I think, the icing on the cake uh, for this evening. Uh, we would like to certainly thank uh, Jumpa Lahiri and Rudrangshu Mukherjee for this 
wonderful evening with us and we would like to express our gratitude with flowers. May I request uh, Sri Shakil Ahmed, Administrative Officer of Victoria Memorial Hall and Sri R.P. Savita, Senior Restorer, to kindly do the honours. So thank you very much. Uh, let's hear it one last time for both of them. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a very, very earnest request to you at this point of time. Please do switch on your mobile phones at this very moment. They have been on silent or switched off for too long, I guess. Yeah? And for all those of you who are not in a tearing hurry to get back home, we would like to invite you to join us for a cup of tea on the terrace on, the, on my left here. You'll have to take the trouble of coming up the steps, please. Thank you very much. And we do hope to see you at the subsequent sessions from 25th to 30th for all the six days to follow. <laughs>